Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to answer a lovely simple question. Are SMR hard drives still bad in 2024? A number of you that have been following data storage or maybe you're just taking the tippy toes in and have seen the three letters SMR shingle with magnetic recording appearing on different websites with people absolutely losing their minds and in 2024 SMR drives are still around, and I think it would be fair to say if you're about to spend a decent amount of Wonga on a brand new network attached storage solution, I think you would be right to be slightly worried that SMR drives, for all the negativity you see online, are still around. And in today's video, we are going to discuss one, what are SMR drives really quickly, two, why everyone seems to hate them, number three, we're going to talk about why, despite that hate, they are still around and getting bigger all the time, and four, when it is okay to use them. So let's crack on with number one. What are SMR drives? I'm pretty sure you've got a lot on, so let's keep it nice and short. There are bigger, longer, and more detailed videos on this out there, but in brief, an SMR drive, shingle magnetic recording, what it does is it takes the same process associated with the majority of writing of data that you find on normal disks, known as CMR or PMR, conventional magnetic recording or perpendicular magnetic recording, where data is written to individual tracks on that spinning platter there on the disk. And more platters equals more data and more tracks to write on. But in a shingle magnetic recording drive, rather Rather than every single track being separate, data is slightly overlapped into the middle gap areas between those platters. And after write operations take place on the disks, during idle time, the disks take that time to recalibrate the data that's available there, put them back in and reorganize. It ultimately means that the extra space that's being used for the shingle, just like you find on a roof, allows these drives to have a larger capacity and result in a lower price per terabyte, allowing users to use huge amounts of uh, storage capacity at a lower price point. Why does everyone hate SMR hard drives? The dislike or hate for SMR hard drives has been around for a while, but it really kind of exploded a few years ago with Western Digital. Western Digital, it wasn't that they were using SMR drives, it was the way their drives were being presented and more importantly, not telling users they were SMR drives. Now, the WD Red series, we're used to it now, it's got loads of deviations, the Pro, the Plus, then you've got SSDs, you've got all kinds. But rocking back to just five, even six, seven years ago, the WD range comprised of two different families, the Standard and the Pro. The Pro was enterprise business, but the Standard class was available across a bunch of capacities. But the two to six capacities were all SMR hard drives. But as mentioned, what was really raggling people's chains was that people didn't know they were SMR hard drives. Why is that important? Do you remember earlier when I mentioned about the data is ever so slightly overlapped? And by overlapped, I mean filling the gaps, hence the term shingle. And during periods of idle activity, the drive could then take the time to recalibrate the data and arrange it all out. Well, what if your system doesn't do idle? What if you're doing heavy write operations all the time and read and write operations? What if during a RAID rebuild, so when you've got say four hard drives and one of them dies and you need to introduce a new drive to rebuild that RAID, those drives are going to be under a significant amount of read write stress, especially if those drives are being read from for general use while the RAID is being degraded and rebuilt or even resilvering when the drive is reinstalled. Such as found and optimized arguably in ZFS platforms like TrueNAS. Ultimately, this meant that a lot of users were using drives inappropriate to that kind of use case scenario, or in the event of a failure, actually ex you know, in increasing the risk of total RAID failure as one drive failing actually put the pressure in terms of activity on the remaining drives. It led to a lot of users thinking their RAID storage system, which all of a sudden they thought was bulletproof and had redundancy in RAID, suddenly didn't really have redundancy from that RAID. And that was what really harked users off. This led to court action. It led to people actually getting money back. Not a lot, to be honest, but still nonetheless 
nonetheless, this is where it all kind of exploded from in terms of the hatred towards SMR. Now, if you are running systems where, you know, you're running multiple, multiple drives and you're filling it with 8, 12, 24 bays, then the very idea that those drives themselves need periods of idle, when you've clearly gone for large capacity and read-write performance, these two you know, methodologies won't mix. And even now, there are almost certainly users that have got storage arrays 7, 8, 10 years old that are still running now that are using SMR drives and they may not even know. If SMR drives are so bad, why are they still around and why are they getting increasingly common? Let's be honest, I mentioned it earlier on, SMR drives present a lower price per terabyte and with hard drive manufacturers like Seagate and WD competing all the time in the hard drive weapons arsenal race, then right now you end up with them both going, well, we've released a bigger hard drive or we're going to release a bigger one. When you look at their respective roadmaps, these are vendors that are talking about their 30 TB, their 50 TB and their 100 TB drives by the end of the decade. And the way they are getting there and getting their weapons out first is predominantly found with SMR drives and you always find that when they launch the larger capacity such as now with 26 and 30 tb drives being talked about they are smr drives now again we'll talk about use case scenarios in a bit but smr drives are probably always going to be around and there is different kinds of smr as well such as host managed smr and drive managed smr and wd talked about this a lot when they were talking about how they deemed those wd red drives to be suitable host managed smr drives as the name suggests is the server array managing the reconfiguration recalibration and defragmentation of that data across the platters the system was managing it which took the overhead off the drive significantly for that whole idle drive time the same goes for drive managed um, shingle magnetic recording drives which had no overhead by the system and in those case scenarios was where it could prove problematic again both systems have strengths and weaknesses depending on the client and the array that you're going to be utilizing but there's no avoiding that smr drives are not going away and a part of that is to do with the same argument of why hard drives are not dead yet when ssds are so much faster because you're never going to get the same price point for ssds the same goes you're not going to get the e-longevity uh, e of the storage lasting for as long as it will on hard drives because ssds are in the, you know it's talked about a lot if an ssd is not powered on for many many years there is the opportunity that data could be lost so with a hard drive you don't have that because it is written to the platter and smr and its price point per terabyte and the still over reliance of the industry particularly at data storage level for archival storage still towards mechanical um, cylindrical drive technology means that smr is going nowhere when is it okay to use smr drives in a nas now this point is always going to cause a few arguments in the comments because there are going to be some users that flat out say an smr drive should be nowhere near your nas and do you know what for the most part i agree i wouldn't be wearing a dickhead hoodie like this one that says raid is not a backup unless i really took raid seriously and smr drives and raid there is some gray area there but i will say there are a few case scenarios number one and again this is nothing to do with nas if you are running a single drive on its own not in a raid array then it's okay to use smr because although you're still going to have that heavy read write access we've discussed you're kind of limited by the simultaneous input output that drives have that's so weak compared with ssds anyway it's only in the larger raid case scenarios that can make those raid collapses occur where data loss is largely 100 in those scenarios the same goes for raid one scenarios where you've got two drives read uh, basically receiving both read and write exactly the same data you have a disk of redundancy but a rebuild is not hinged on one drive or the other mechanically it's purely cloning the drive on one disk to another it is not layering the data across them the final use case scenario for larger arrays and this is something that the likes of wd and seagate will be keen to highlight not only in their branding but in their marketing materials is to do with archival long-term storage have you ever heard the phrase worm write once read many well how about 
write once, read loads. SMR drives are pretty okay for read actions. It's only when heavy write actions occur and simultaneous read write actions occur that SMR drives have the potential to become unstable in a RAID configuration. Now that's why when SMR drives are spoken about by these big brands, and particularly when they're going Johnny Big Bananas about launching the bigger capacities, they do so with words like archival. They use words like cold storage because in those scenarios where data is being written to very slowly in some cases, given that they won't be going for blistering speed, which again with SMR that multi-RAID write action can be problematic, it it will be slow, methodical, but also archival, where write is non-existent, but read is the order of the day. And that are those three scenarios are pretty much the only ways in which I would ever recommend the use of SMR. And that third one in specific um, uh, server client array systems that are designed for that host managed SMR client there. But this has been are SMR drives still bad in 2024? I am sure you've got an opinion on this and I want to hear it in the comments. But thank you so much for watching. We've linked to a few articles uh, by myself, but actually by Eddie more so on the subject of SMR drives. He's making sure for a master list of all drives, whether they are uh, conventional or perpendicular magnetic recording or SMR. And that should be linked below, as well as links to the other articles on WD from years gone about that whole SMR WD red stuff linked below. But apart from that, thank Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.